remove the wheel, use a 17 millimeter socket, take the lug nuts off. When you go to take the last one, just support the wheel so it doesn't fall. And grab the wheel, slide it off. We're gonna take the inner fender well out, use a T30 socket, take this bolt out right here. And there's another one over here. Take those out. Now we're gonna take the push pins out. There's push pins all over the place in here. Some of these you can use a Phillips head screwdriver and just gently loosen up the centerpiece. And then slide it out the rest of the way. So you wanna get all of those out, some right here. out. There should be a couple right here and here, behind here, and then on the other side. Underneath there's a plastic nut right here. Just use a 10 millimeter socket. Take that off. Slide that out of the way. And there's another push pin right here. And spin that center piece out. And pry it down. There's a couple fasteners under here. This happens to be a Phillips head, so use a Phillips head screwdriver. And same with over here. Just take this panel off, slide that out of the way. If there's any other push pins holding this in, you want to take those out. Now just slide the inner fender well out. out of your way. On this friction tensioner right here, there's a little rip cord. If you just grab this little tab, slide it out, and then you're gonna pull, and it, you're gonna see that the tension gets loosened right there, and then there's a little slot right there, and there's a tab. Just slide that over that tab. That keeps the tension off this, so that it's loose. Now there's three bolts holding this tensioner on. You want to use a 10 millimeter wrench. You can at least get the lower one. Loosen that up. You can use a ratchet wrench if you can fit in there. And pull that bolt out. There's two others on top. You want to try to get in there with the wrench. If you have a 10 millimeter socket that is very short, even shorter than this, you might be able to get up in there underneath there. There is a special tool that you can use, but if you just have basic tools that are a little bit shorter, you'll uh, be able to get those upper two bolts out. So you want to take those out as well. loose. Pull that one out. Then you want to get the last one out. It's on the back side of here. This is where a short socket would be ideal. Otherwise just use a wrench and do the best you can. Because we're just using a wrench, if we had the special tool, we'd be able to get right on there. Um, we're going to pull this water pump pulley off. You wouldn't normally need to take the pulley off just to do this tensioner, but um, it's going to make it a little easier. So use the same 10 millimeter wrench, loosen up the bolts on this pulley. You might have to hold the pulley from spinning. You can use a belt tool to go around the pulley to prevent it from spinning or just use a screwdriver or a pry bar get in between where the bolts are. And 
You can loosen up the bolts. Once they're all loose, you can take them out by hand. Take all those out. I'll grab the pulley. Just slide it off. Just slide it towards the back of the vehicle. And slide it down. It comes right out. Now we can access this bolt a little easier with a wrench. bolts out and grab the tensioner and just slide it down and slide it out. Now we're going to drain the coolant. There's no drain on the radiator so we're just going to take off one of the hoses right here. Just use some hose clamp pliers. Make sure you have a drain bucket underneath. rotate the hose back and forth. If you have to, you can use a right angle pick. Get in there, break the seal, and just be careful. I just want to move this up a little. It's all drained out. Now we can put this hose back. Hose clamp back in position. That's good. Now we're going to take the water pump bolts out. I'm going to start with that top one up there. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. Make it a little easier to get to. It's always a good idea to have a drain bucket underneath. Even though you drain the coolant, there could still be some when you take the water pump off. Loosen that up. Take that bolt out. All right, got that top bolt out. Now I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter socket Take the other bolts out. All the bolts are out. You just grab a pry bar, just pry the water pump out. Just carefully. There you go. Get some coolant. Just let that drip out. I'm just gonna put one of the bolts back in just so it doesn't pop off real quick. Now it's drained out, now I can pull that last bolt out. Just 
grab the pump, slide it out and down, and just maneuver it out. Might have to twist it. Get around here. And it slides right out. Now I'm just gonna use a scraper and just scrape off any areas near the gasket. It's a little bit of corrosion. You can use a razor blade or even a little emery cloth or sandpaper. Just clean this up a little. Now I'll just take a little bit of brake parts cleaner on a rag and just wipe it down. That's nice and clean. Take the new gasket, line it up on the water pump. There is a little tab that lines up with that slot and push it in. Get all the way around. Now slide the water pump in position. Get the bolt started. and tighten those all down. And when you tighten these all down, you wanna to torque those to nine foot pounds all the way around. If you can get a torque wrench in there, if not, do the best you can. Before we put this in, we want to pull on this rip cord right here. It's going to loosen up the tension. And just slide that in place. Just like that. Slide the tensioner in position. Get the bolt started. Just going to use a magnet just to get one of the bolts in. Make it a little easier. I'll do the same for this other one. your ratchet wrench if you can and tighten those bolts down. So make sure those are all tight. All three of those bolts. And that's good. Take the pulley, goes over the water pump. I'm gonna slide that in position. It slides right over there. Get the holes lined up. Oh, I'm going to have to put my hand in there. 
and get the bolt started. Now I'm going to use the pry bar to keep it from spinning and just tighten those bolts down. Now it's very important to loosen up this rip cord. You want to grab that, pull that out, and then push it in. And it makes contact with this friction wheel against the water pump pulley. Otherwise your water pump pulley isn't going to spin, so make sure you do that. Now put that inner fender well in. Line it up in position. And start putting all the push pins back in. And the screws, get those started right there and over here. Tighten those down. And underneath, put those push pins in. And this plastic nut, snug that down. And put this panel back. Screw that in place. That's good. Now reinstall the wheel. Put the lug bolts in. Now I'm going to torque the lug nuts to 110 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. Just go around again, double check. Now you want to add the appropriate coolant. You can add it into the reservoir right here. Just take the cap off. And as you add the coolant, there is a bleeder screw right here. Just use a straight blade screwdriver, loosen up that bleeder screw. About two or three turns, 
And then as you're adding the coolant, you'll hear air coming out of that bleed screw. Once you start seeing coolant or the air stops, then you can close that up. And then just make sure the coolant is at the appropriate level. You want to run the engine for about 10 minutes, get it nice and hot, shut the vehicle off, let it cool down. Once it's cool, adjust the level accordingly.